start getting into solving things, but the first section that we're going to talk about is the distributing principle. The distributing property. This is one of the concepts that is actually really, really important for what I would say the rest of your mathematical lives. So, do you remember what, or in general, what does distributing mean? If you, okay, get yeah, out, right? And normally, if you're going to distribute something, you should share with everybody. But you guys would probably only share with the people that you like instead of everyone. So, do you remember what you're supposed to do if you're going to do the distributing property? What operation do you do? Say it with confidence, Michael. Multiply. Multiplication. Anytime from here on out that you hear this word right here, you automatically have to think about multiplication. So if you hear the distributing property or just distribution, it's talking about multiplication. I can distribute anything, basically. So I can uh, multiply... A number, a variable, or a combination of those two things together. Okay, so meaning I could also do a product. And we can distribute those through our parentheses, and we'll talk about that in a second. So any number, 13, a variable. Um, it could be K, it could be something with an exponent, so K cubed, for instance. It could be a product. What's a product in general? A product or the product is the answer to what? Multiplication, Multiplication right? So a product would be something like uh, 4M. That would be a product. But I could distribute 4M through. Okay. So the most important part of this is... Not only would we say that we can multiply one of these three things, but we're going to group this as a certain uh, vocabulary word. Any idea of what we would call uh, a number, a variable, or a product? And it's one word, and it begins with a T. Have you heard this word before? Don't know what I said. Yes, you have heard this word before. Each one of these would be a blank, which starts with the word T. How many get it? What? Yeah. 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 I can't keep going too far because there's only four letters. Oh, term. 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 Oh, okay. oh wow. Letters. Letters. Oh, yeah, so, a term. A term is a number, a variable, or a product. Have you ever heard that definition? Yeah. Okay. And how do we separate terms? Or and. Right? So, terms are separated. by operators, and more importantly, our operators are plus or minus. So when Trevor said division, we would maybe have a division in here and separated by operators. But division isn't an actual operator that we can use here. So what you have to realize now is when I have terms that are split up by these operators, we can write them as like this, m plus 3, um, k minus 7. All right. So these would be actually two terms together with the plus sign, two terms together with the minus sign. Now what you have to realize is these operators are signs but they can also be the what? Variables. 
What else could they be if they're right in front of a number? A clock. Yeah. What? Yeah. So they're the signs and they're the operators. So you can think of it as plus or you can think of it as a positive. So when I say this, I would usually say m plus 3. But because the positive or plus sign is in front of 3, it makes the 3 positive. Over here, the 7 would be negative. Because if we did what we learned about adding and subtracting integers, right? What was our rule about subtraction? Keep change, change, right? And so we would keep change, change and see how the negative is actually by the 7. But a lot of the times we grow out of that method of keep change, change. And we just recognize that when we write k minus 7, yes, it is a subtraction problem, but it also means that the 7 is negative. Okay? So normally now, if we wanted to keep these two things together, how do we group them? We put parentheses around them. And I think we've talked about this. If I put parentheses and I want this to be kind of a unit that I carry along together, do you remember what we call this? I think we introduced this uh, maybe in chapter one. Begins with a Q. Quotient. Quotient. Quotient's the answer to division. Huh? Quantity? No. Yeah. Quantity. Yeah, this is a quantity. Awesome. Okay. So anytime that we put parentheses around as many terms as we want, we can call it a quantity and we would take that with us as a whole. So M plus 3, we really want to put parentheses around it because it's one thing. So remember now, how do I show multiplication uh, between a number and a variable? You just put them next to each other. Put them right next to each other. So 13 times K cubed ends up being 13 K cubed. Right? So again, don't worry about the cube part, but just remember that anytime one of our chief main rules of multiplication was that I can multiply anything together, right? So it doesn't matter if it's a number, a variable, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, we can put it together. Then we have to think about our rules for multiplication. Besides that you can multiply by anything, what was our rules for the signs of our answers? Exactly right. If you had the same signs, you had a positive answer. If you had different signs, doesn't matter which one comes first, doesn't matter which one's bigger, the answer is negative. Okay? So, do you remember the concept of distributing? This means something like this. So this would be the distribution property in general. So we're going to use um, letters and to represent this. So we're going to have some letter on the outside with parentheses. And then we have however many that we want on the inside, separated by pluses and minuses. And so what did you do? Oh, we took the A times B and then we C. Give the answer. Yeah. Say it one more time. A times B times C. No, it's like A times B means A times B. Yes. So, we would rewrite this as what? AB plus AC. Right? So, one of the things that I like to do, especially at the beginning, if I'm confused about this, I like to show myself that I'm going to take that A, and as Landon said, we're going to multiply that A by every single part of the parentheses. So, if there's seven different things inside my parentheses, I'm going to multiply seven different times. Now, the last thing that I have to look at is this right over here. Can I combine those two things? Can I take AB plus AC? No, take that A squared and then BC. Good thinking. Otherwise, no. But no. So, anytime that you have different letters and different letters, even though there's one in common, you can't combine them. We'll talk about like terms, I think, tomorrow. Sorry, I'm going to make Okay. Realize now. The A could be on the outside or on the right-hand side, too, but it's the exact same problem, right? So 
So even though that the A is on the, um, on the right hand side of the parentheses, we would still say, and is this wrong if I write it as BA? No. no. And then I can write it as CA. But we've talked about this before too, right? We should always try to write it how? Okay, alphabetical. Okay, so even though that this should have been, if we would have done it this way correctly, by taking the and then this, we get this, we can actually write it as the first thing that we would, that we wrote, and we should try to do that. Okay. So they start out by showing you this with all numbers. Now to me, I would never waste my time doing the distributive property if they're all numbers like this problem right here. Why? Because you just add them and multiply. Yeah, we can go back and do PEMDAS, right? And in PEMDAS, the parenthesis or the P was the parentheses, and we said that we always wanted to do inside first. first and then do everything else. So myself, I would distribute like this. I would do exactly what Katie said. So what's five plus eight? 13, and then we get multiplied by 4, so we get what? 52. Now, if you don't like that way, or you don't see it that way, you can still do what we were talking about with the distributive property. We could take 4 times 5, which is what? 20. 20, and 4 times 8, 32. which is 32, add those together, and we get 52. But then it kind of goes against the principles that we talked about with PEMDAS. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's try to do this with a shorter problem. Oh, okay. All right. A one day rafting trip costs $69 a person and wetsuits are $15 each. Write two equivalent expressions for the total cost for a family of four that all get wetsuits. Okay, so how would I write the problem using distributing, or parentheses, when we say a one-day rafting costs $69 per person and $15 per wetsuit. Um, Four on the outside, perfect. Perfect. Mike, did you have a different way of doing it? You're gonna say that? Okay. Well, you, could flip -flop yeah, you, you could just flip flop these two, right? And, then put four on the other side. and you could put four on the other side, or we could really list, realistically say four times sixty nine plus four times fifteen, right? Both of those are the exact same thing. So either way, how much does a family of four cost? Do the math. Go do it. Don't hurt yourself. Use your paper. Yeah. Is it three thirty six? That's what I got. So remember then. We should answer the question, so because they said total cost, we should have our dollar sign. Okay. So let's try another one. If you work four hours on Friday and five hours on Saturday and you make six dollars and twenty-five cents per hour, how much are you gonna make? You just take would six twenty-five be on the outside? Six twenty-five would be on the outside? Perfect. And then four and five would be on in the parentheses. Perfect. So, what are we going to do? 625 times 9. 9, really, right? Yeah. Do it. We got it. 625. 5, 4, 2, 2, 56. Got it. Um, you always are boring. I want to get done. That's not good. Dude, I'm going to. Well, you can do that one. I'm going to get the answer. I'm going to beat when it comes to 625. All right, questions here. So, it's just a different way of setting up the problem. You probably never realized that you're using the distributing property when you were doing simple story problems like that. But it was actually a property. So now we're going to do it with algebraic expressions. Again, what's an expression? Expression is just 
An expression does not have an equal sign. And if it's an expression or an algebraic expression, we're probably going to also include what? Variables. Exactly right. Okay, so not only are we going to have numbers involved, but we're going to put variables in them too. Okay? So, same concept, same rules with multiplication. All right? But now we just include variables. So, two parentheses, x plus 4. Remember, the most important thing is, is that I can multiply anything together. So, don't forget to do it to both. So, 2 times x is what? 2x. 2x, awesome. 2 times 4? 8. Plus 8. Can I say that the answer is 10x? Yeah. yeah. They can. They so, can. let's think about it, okay? Everybody think. Make a decision right now. Don't say anything out loud. Paul, what if it's not? How many people say, yes, I can add 2x plus 8? Well, I think you add the piece of L. You're supposed to say Oh, you can do something else. Yeah. Okay. We're going to listen to this. Okay. So who says, absolutely no, I can't do that? Can you explain why? Who says, I really don't know? Oh, I and who says you can do something else? I feel like you can do something else. No, I, I feel less uh, You think you can do something else? Can, can I yeah. do some yeah. travel? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's start here. Why? Because you don't know what x is. Okay. Oh, I know what that is. Why would you say yes? Yeah. Why would you say yes? Because um, when you find the answer, you're supposed to simplify it to like the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can live with that kind of too. All right, so here's a whole different new concept. This is going to be really Look, did you like, uh, I think it's a different lesson. Right. Two from both sides, well, but there's not an equal sign. Keep that in mind. Kenzie. Okay. Listen. If 4 is x and you do 2 times 4 equals 8, and then plus 8 is 16, and then you do, or, I forgot what I was going to say, but then you can do, uh, and then if you do, or 10, 10 times 2, which would be 20. Anyone? It never, it never gets it, right? Well, one of the reasons is because there's no equal sign. It's an expression, right? That's a big deal here. Okay? So, what I would say to this, and I know you're going to sound and think this is funny and stuff, but to me, these are two different kinds of terms. Okay? Remember, terms. There are two different kinds of terms. To me, this, I would, when I learned this, my uh, algebra teacher called this a cow and a horse. Okay? If you consider an X a cow and a number a horse, would you ever add cows and horses together? No. No, it's just weird, right? You can't do that. Okay? So, the only time, and we'll, again, we'll get, to, we'll get into this a little bit more on Monday. This is algebraic, simplifying algebraic expressions. The only time that you can simplify this is if they're the exact same variable. Okay, so this is my answer. Okay, but what would like to do? You're solving equations. And we'll do that the rest of the next week. But yeah, you're, you're just a little ahead. All right, let's try again. Um, negative 2 out in front and n minus 3. Think about what you get. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. All right. What do you think? So remember, I'm multiplying negative 2. I'm taking the negative with me. So when I multiply, I'm multiplying with negative 2 to both that and that. But remember, this minus sign says that the 3 is negative. So it's both negative and one minus 3. Yes. Okay, so what's negative 2 times n? Negative 2n. Negative 2n. And what's negative 2 times negative 3? 6. six. Positive 6. So can, I, can I subtract them? No. no. Negative 2 plus 6, I can't make negative 4? No, they don't have to No, so, cow and a horse again, right? Different things. So when could you? When can I? Great question. If I had negative 2n minus 6n. See how they're both cows then? Then I would take negative 2 minus 6, which would be negative 8n, and I'd get more cows. Right. 
So it's got to be the same letter, though, too. So you can't have a cow, a horse, and then a pig. Okay, so if you had an N, an M, and a number, you, you would have that all the same. So, here, here, I'll show you that right here. So if we had uh, four times uh, A plus 7 minus K. Okay, same concept. So again now, this time I'm going to multiply three times. Right? Because there's three terms inside my parentheses. So what do I get here? 4A. 4A. Plus 28. Plus 28. Minus 4K. Minus 4K. And then I would take the time to write it in alphabetical order. Which it kind of is, but here's the other thing. When you start doing these kind of problems, this is called a trinomial, but that's a, a way ahead of ours. Okay? You always want to have the number that's by itself last. So I would rewrite this as 4a minus 4k plus 28. No, if you left it as the first one, it's fine. But again, down the line, it's going to be way easier if you put the number at the end. So here's a new thing for you. This number has a name also. The base. The base, no. So what did we call the number in front of a? Variable. Okay, but what did we specifically call it if it was in front of a variable? Begins with a C. A coefficient. A coefficient. Okay, so the number at the end also has a name by itself with the letter C. Anybody know what that is? What? Yeah, yeah, say it loud. Yes. So a number by itself is called a constant. So more vocabulary. All right. Now, ask your question that you're going to get to. I don't know. You said you were thinking of something, and then that wasn't what you were thinking. So, back to the negative two n. Is it? The, I think it'd be the same thing. Though. It'd be negative two n minus like six a. So it just seems it just has nothing to do with it. But like, this was. It'd be like three a. Yeah, but then it'd be the same thing as other. Then it would be positive 6a. So you can't subtract that. Right, because this would be a cow and a pig. So if there's two variables, The only time you can do it is if they're the exact same variables. And look, this right here and this right here aren't the same variables. So you can't do that either. No, because this would be, and this is where it gets really technical, but this is a brown cow and this is a black cow. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. Yeah. So I can't, I don't want to mix my brown cows with my black cows. It's just an algebra thing. Don't yes. giggle at me. Oh, oh that's abuse. Okay? Go back. So, go back. what about this one? Negative three times. J minus K. Do this by yourself. Do oh, it <laughs> you by yourself on your paper. Come on, come on, come on. We're almost done. <laughs> Wow. Come on. Wait. Okay. Now I got it. What do you got? Uh, I have negative three J. Minus negative 3k. Okay. No, now listen. Now listen what he said. Minus negative 3k. Big plus. Right? But two negatives always make a big plus. So you should write it as just negative 3j plus 3k. Then you stop right there. Because I got a, a kangaroo and a hippo. I don't know what the j is. Jackrabbit. Jack rabbit and a kangaroo. I don't want to add those together either. All right. How about this one? This is an interesting one. Okay. D plus F times negative one. Now here's where the book probably makes a mistake right here. This right here, I would never say that that's multiplication. Would you? Oh no, it's not that. Right. 
So they should have put parentheses around that negative one if they want us to multiply our quantity times negative one. So now think about the answer here. Oh, that is weird. I'm distributing what? Is your, is your name different now? No, it's not. Well, yeah, because if they didn't put those parentheses on the end, then it's just one big uh, addition and subtraction. Then it's just saying d plus f minus 1. And that would have been my answer. If I distribute now this negative 1 through my parentheses, what do I get? Negative, negative d. Negative d. Minus, um, negative yeah. minus negative 1. Just f. So here's the difference here. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. When you do negative 1 to this, you're just taking negative 1 times f. There's only one negative. Remember, one negative makes the whole thing negative. So when you said minus negative, you actually had two negatives. Right? So let's try a negative one again. Negative four on the outside. Uh, a minus six K. So again, take this negative four. Notice here, I don't need parentheses here. And it still says multiplication. Because it's in front. Because it's in front. Okay. But take negative 4 times this and negative 4 times this. But remember, what's my second term? My second term is negative 6k. Okay. So, what'd you get? Negative 4a plus 24k. Awesome. And again, can I add them together? No. No, no I got an antelope and a kangaroo. Ostriches with an O. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, questions. Does it make sense though now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so go real slow. And remember, if there happens to be three or four or seven different things through there, you got to distribute that number all the way through there. And the sign out in front is the sign of the number. Don't do too many of them. Okay? So, Here's your homework. And then what Landon was talking about, we'll actually do next week. And that's called solving equations. So it's got to have a what?